In this topic, I would like to talk about the insider and outsider debate within Islamic studies and the relation between them. When I heard about this for the first time, I thought naturally that it meant studies of Islam from a theological perspective. And this is the bias you naturally have against disciplines when it touches anything to do with the religion. People consider studies of Islam as something that has to do with the religion or with key players of Islam, like the Prophet Muhammad. But is this really what Islam truly is? Is it just contained only to the religion and the hadiths? The strength of Islamic studies is that, as it says in Curtis' text, that is the ever-expanding body of participants who come from a vast number of disciplinary perspectives. This highlights the importance of this, of this field because Islam is everywhere, from international politics to relations between individuals and even hip-hop music. The practitioners of this field are dragged into politics whether they like it or not, and I can just imagine the tensions the practitioners within the field creates, because they are considered as people whom do have influence in the direction of the field and also the power to influence politics. As one can see in the de on the debate between Omid Safi and Aaron Hughes, that politics and Islamic studies interacts and race, ethnicity, religion, and even the Palestinian-Israel conflict is dragged into any debate about the field. And things go even more bizarre in Aaron Hughes' text, like for instance when he accuses Saif to be biased of the fact that Hughes occupied a chair in the Jewish studies, and I feel that there is a portion of anti-Semitism accusation from Hughes. But no matter what, this highlights the sensitivity in this field. Another important issue is highlighted that is highlighted in the debate within them is that there is an inside and outside perspective. Omar Saif is concerned that Muslim academics might view other disciplines like feminism, post-colonialism and so on as foreign, secular and western imposition upon authentic Islamic values and thus risking self-marginalizing this field and ultimately become irrelevant. This field must be open to development as field as Muslims themselves changes. But I feel that another fear is that Muslim scholars could also be biased by their origin and their religious background and thus be against phenomena that originates from the areas outside the Middle East. The very most dangerous issue of today's Middle East Middle, Middle Eastern conflict is the division between the major players of the region that is dragging the areas to further division. Personally, I believe any discussion or interest of the Middle East is beneficial of the region and it just shows the importance the region has in the global community. Without any doubt, it is beneficial to combine the inside and outside approach to Islamic studies. It is obvious that the interest in Islamic studies surged after 9-11 in order to bring some sort of understanding of what happened. Politics are also involved in this decision. But I would say that 9-11 was also beneficial for the Muslims commu Muslim communities from the perspective that the surge in Islamic studies are forcing even the region to discuss these questions. Another issue that should be discussed is uh, authentic Islamic values. The very usage of the word authentic points to the fact that a value judgment is taking place. Authentic Islamic value is like assuming that all Muslims believe the same thing or that certain parts of Islam are more, or more authentic than others. I'm not saying that Omid Saif said this in his text, but it's a common thread that always is present in discussion amongst Muslims. Muslims have believed different things, and this has resulted in many different types of Muslims, like Sunnis, Shia, and so on. Therefore, when you think about Islam as a social phenomenon that has been created by the people in the region, it all makes sense why there is no consensus, and, it, and definitely why the authenticity debate is still there. Middle East societies has never been contained or isolated from external relations and therefore never unchanging from early Islam to our age. But then again, who is insider and outsider? Is it our belief in the religion or our names? Middle East has always been part of the world and the world has always been present in the region, so the borders are blurred. For instance, I am atheist, vegetarian, have lived in Europe all my life, and have great love for, for instance, UFC. I even favored McGregor against the Muslim Khabib. So where am I in the inside or outside of the discussion? Everyone should take part of the discussion about Islam because they matter. And outsider approaches may be something that the religion really needs in these times in order for it to be reformed.
said, little bitch, you can fuck with me if you wanted to. These expensive, these is red bottoms, these is bloody shoes. Hit the school, I can get them both, I don't wanna choose. And I'm quick, cut a nigga off, so don't get comfortable. Look, I don't dance now, I make money moves. Say, I don't gotta dance, I make money move. If I see you now, speak, that means I don't fuck with you. I'm a boss who a worker, bitch, I make bloody moves. Now she say, she gon' do what a who? Let's find out and see. Call you B, you know where I'm at, you know where I be. You in the club, just